Hello, hello, and welcome everyone. Hope you're having a nice day. <clears throat> so, we are going to continue uh, implementing our pathfinding. So, one sec. Let me pull up the documentation. Also, I need this thing. Uh, hello, Nina san Nice to see you. So, um, yeah, last time we managed to make it work somewhat. It actually builds the, the path for the NPCs and NPCs following that path. That's good. Uh, but, but, we have a few problems. So first of all, the main problem is we cannot generate big nav meshes. Couldn't really figure out why exactly, but uh, probably this is something to do with the way those nav meshes are stored. And I wanted to actually try another tool, one sec. Let me take a look. I think I have it somewhere. Hmm. Maybe not. Um, let's see. Not request. This thing. I wanted to try and use this uh this unity package to generate nav meshes and then export them and then use them on the server so we will try and uh use unity as like an intermediate um intermediate platform so let's take a look uh, i guess we need a new project in unity no, we need to download this thing So let's start a new project. Uh, 3D, sure. Uh, location, somewhere under the Immerheim project. Uh, no, TMP. We'll save it to Unity A star. Let's call it like that. Wait, 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 wait. It's going to be stored in this folder. I need to name this project as Unity A star. Okay. Bah. Can I use 2020, sure. Now, uh, we need this package. Let's put it here. So what do we have here? Um, hello. Did I import anything? Hello, Unity. Okay, whatever. Um, I think we will need everything for now. Yeah, sure. <clears throat> uh, 
and uh, I've seen some video somewhere. I think this one. No, maybe not. Um, documentation. Get started. This one. So let's try maybe and recreate this example. So yeah, let's create a new plane. I don't know. Yeah, Unity is a little bit weird with this these coordinates, but okay. I have a plane. Uh, if I remember, he also creates an object. Cubes as obstacles, sure. Oops. Yeah, maybe let's attach it some kind of material to that. Style like that, I don't see any changes. I don't know. Should be working. Oh, here we go. Ah, there are two of them. Okay. So yeah, now let's duplicate this thing a bunch of times. Basically recreate the tutorial that we have. Something like that. Uh, hello, Rakadak. Hi. Why is my animation not working? Here we go. Hi. <clears throat> so, um, what's next? Empty object, K. Okay. Hey, star. Pathfinder, K. Okay. Components. Uh, what? Pathfinder, K. Okay. Okay, so now graphs, they use grid graph by default, but let's try and use navmesh directly. I 
guess we need to place it somewhere. Where is the wireframe? Here we go. Okay, I have no idea to be honest. Source mesh. Okay. Hmm. I have no idea to be honest. Let's try and delete it and let's create a grid graph. Okay, so for grid graph, we do have this thing. Hmm. Oh, I see. So that box is the nav mesh, guess. Hmm. It's a little bit weird for some reason. Oh, so it's. Hmm. Nav mesh offset rotation scale. Can I? Move it somehow. Hmm. Okay, if I place it right there, still, I think it's spawning in zero coordinates. Weird. <clears throat> Gonna build and see the experiment. Just build this scenario. Uh, I'm trying to figure out how this plugin works. Can we use it? So right now I'm trying to just build some kind of example with nav meshes, and I have no idea how to do that. It's weird. But okay, let's manually set the offset. So that should do it. So that should cover our whole plan, right? I see the studying part of my live streams. Okay. So now what? So for the graphs, it just generates when you hit scan. But I don't see any changes to the nav mesh. Should they like create an actual mesh? What, how is that work?
So how do I generate an mesh? Again, this is for the grid graph. Wait. Really, it's for pro only. Okay, that, that's recast. Uh, Oh, we have the nav mesh. Huh, system gen can generate nav meshes automatically. But that is for pro version only. Wow. 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 So yeah, I guess we cannot do that. Huh. Well, we have some kind of beta version. Twenty twenty point oh twenty twenty two point two and up. Ah. Hmm, and it's also paid. Okay. Well, yeah, this is unfortunate. So you basically have to buy it to generate nav meshes. Truly thought you were on a Windows six P no 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 no. No. Um So yeah, one hundred bucks. Well if I would know for sure that we can use it and this is like a nice useful tool, then sure I I would buy it. But I'm not sure if this is useful to us. Not at all. So let, let me see. Maybe I'm missing something. Um, documentation. Craft generation. Not much cutting. Hmm. This is this is great actually. So if I could like fine tune uh, the the nav mesh, that would be awesome. Ah, I see. So you can literally punch holes. Hmm, I don't know. Uh, saving a and graphs. Large walls. <clears throat> How did they 
they recommend using large rolls. Hmm. Creating graphs during runtime. Hmm. There's a nav meshes. <clears throat> yeah, the automatic generation is only available in the pro version. Well. Hmm. Well, I'm interested in whether that is possible, but probably we're not going to be able to do that. Well, maybe, maybe I can source like a copy of this paid version <clears throat> just to test it, or maybe we can, wait, can we actually uh, download, can we test out the beta? Nope. Acquires pro license. Free. Don't think they're gonna like expose an older pro version for free but that would be that would be great if they can do that basically i just want to see if we can use this plugin if we can sure i'll buy it even if if that's the perfect tool for our use case i'm just not sure it's useful so i could buy it and then never use it this is what I'm afraid of. Hmm. Okay. Um. What we can do. We can try and load the actual map here and see if it allow us, allows us to actually uh, work with the game map. So what can we do? Um, so we have Printera, for example. Uh, Let's try and copy that. To here. Will it process the arch files? I think I deleted something like a light. Sh yeah, I did delete a light. Let's just delete the cubes. Okay. 
So this looks good, right? Now, uh, can we build a grid graph? Mm. Can I scale it? Uh, this amount of nodes, right? Not size. Ah, I see. I see. Okay, so if we make it 100 by 100, wait, can I move it somehow? Can't see anything. Oops. It's really hard to see on this thing, but okay. Now, why do we have impassable grid here? Hmm. Hmm. Do I need to no wait? Do I need to place this thing here? I have no idea. Uh, let's scrap all that. Uh, how do I create a new scene? I already forget. New scene. Okay, so we have a plane. Uh, let's create a couple of cubes.
So after the cubes, what do we do? So we create a great graph, right? I have no idea. <laughs> Where the hell is it? That the one? Yeah, there's the one. Why is it there? I think I messed up with the scaling by a lot, but whatever. Well, that's not it. Wait, what? I have no idea where that thing is. Can't see anything. Okay. Okay, this is weird. Why do we have the nav meshes? Uh, well, not nav meshes, but mm, nav cells, I guess, on top of the boxes, not on top of the actual. Kill cubes. Ah, I see. Here we go. So the mm, the grid should be within the the mesh that is supposed to be a floor. Okay, whatever. So 
So now here, oh crap. Guess I'm going to delete this one. How do I rename it? Oh my god. Um, so now here we'll place this thing at zero. Okay. <sighs> oh my god, what, what's going on? How do I make it work? Why is it so small or what is this? Okay, that was weird. But yeah, let's say we have this thing. Now we create an empty object, a star, hit component, pathfinder, grids, graphs, I guess. So now, now we need to place that grid, I guess. Yeah, it's the one. Somehow within this model. The hell. So hard to see. Okay, here we go. Okay, so I have grid here. It's placed a little bit below. Uh, one hundred by one hundred. Scan. Nothing. Scan. Impassable. Hmm. What the hell? Hmm. Maybe it's the problem with the collision somehow. Where is that thing? Okay, so plan, for example, mesh renderer. Mesh collider. 
Okay, so it's starting to do something. Guess we need to make it a little bit higher. No? Here we go. Uh, I don't know what to do, to be honest. Don't think we can use this, maybe theoretically, but so far it doesn't look very good. Hmm. Also, this request navigation, I had a very old version. Can I wait? Guess I would need to build this one from source, right? Don't have any binaries. Hmm. Did I build it from source? The, the version that I have right now. I forget where it's located. Request navigation, I have one pi one five one. Hmm. And yeah, probably I did build it from source. <clears throat> Okay, um, how do I build it? Oh no. Well, I guess we're going to do that because I don't think I have any choice right now. I, I want to actually try and see if the original request navigation works properly and compare it to the C Sharp implementation. So, <clears throat> 
Windows. Uh, where is it? Remake. Okay. So uh, let's try. Do we use a release that's from May? Well, I guess, yeah. They have released 2.0, but don't think that's what they need to use. Let's try a release. So we have the release. Mm, where was that article? Request demo requires SDL. Um, by the way, do we have uh, The Visual Studio projects. No, we don't. So yeah, I guess we would have to generate the Visual Studio project with uh, pre-make. So um, pre-make five, pre-make five executable location is included in your system. So okay, I did download it. Um, Guess I need to make it available. One sec. It's weird that they don't have any. Wait, we need pre make five. Uh, yeah, I do have the pre make five. Pre make five windows. How do I install this? Just anywhere, I guess, and put it into the path. <sighs> Whatever. Uh, let me try pre make five. So yeah, this binary works. Now I guess I need to put it somewhere where I can call it from globally. One second. Pre make five. Okay. Okay, it works. So now I have pre make five. <clears throat> So now I can reference the GitHub Actions Build Script. Hell. Okay, um, grab this deal to release from here and zip it to request demo contrib. Sure. Request demo contrib. Uh, 
How do I put it? And then there's the for the folder as such the path. Web X eighty six. Which version? I guess I'm gonna use this one. Um, nope, I need the source. Actually, wait. What is this? Yeah, this one. Uh, so, um, is the lib x eighty six? The hell? Maybe I do need the binaries. Okay, whatever. Uh, this is. Can I try and play a set put? Oh, and I need x86. x86. Okay, so we need to create country SDL lib lib x86. I guess we're gonna just put the DLLs there. I, I don't know what they expect. The, these C++ uh, projects, it's annoying to work with. Okay, x86 is dealt. Let's hope that eno that's enough. If not, we will see what the errors tell us. Tell us. So uh, now we need we need to go into request demo folder and run premake request demo run premake oh wait visuals to the twenty twenty two do I have it I may not have it. I do have it. Okay, great. Okay, so now we have the Visual Studio. Open build Visual Studio. Cast notification and so on. Sure. Build and run, okay. Probably we don't have the SDL installed properly, but we will see. Don't think the only thing that we need is uh, the DLL file. Probably we need more like includes and stuff like that. Uh, at the startup project. Release belt solution. Yeah, and we do have a lot of missing stuff. Okay. Mm. This is, I don't know. STL lib x86. Do 
development library release from here and then zip it into Cantrip. I guess I need this one. Yeah, here we go. Definitely need this one. Then we extract it as like that. So lib, yeah, x86, yeah. Now it should be fine. <clears throat> We get then recast demo. Nice. <clears throat> so solo mesh. Yeah, now we have the save and load, so I guess this is what was added in the 1.6 release, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the binary file. So probably, technically, we can generate nav mesh but save it in a different format that allows more nodes or whatever <clears throat> but for now for now we can test with our new meshes so let's test the printer mesh let's put all of them there and see how that looks like solo mesh this one. So, if I remember correctly, we use the default settings. Ah, these settings may be different, actually. Let me see. Uh, what do we have in this one by default? 0.3 cell size. Cell height, point, height point 0.2, okay. Yeah, okay. So let's build the mesh. How do I navigate here? Okay, we have the door here. And here, yeah, looks good. Okay, so now if we save the mesh, wait. Ah, okay, salon of mesh dot bin. Okay, now can we load this one? 
that's the the biggest problem that we had uh and let's try and build with the default parameters can we do that could not build the turn off mesh well Then I have no idea how we can do this. I guess the only way is to decrease the cell size and try again. That's annoying. Can I clean it up a little bit? Oops. That's material. Okay. <clears throat> so let's increase the view range. And I don't know, let's try and chop this. And these edges. Come on, Blender, hello. <sighs> okay, screw that. Mm, this is this is bad. So let's import the STL file, but we need to scale it down. And we also need to invert it. Okay. 
Now we need to delete all of that. Oh my god, how do I... Oh, here we go. So we need to delete that. Why don't those things get deleted? The hell? Why can't I delete these things? Hmm. Okay. Weird. I guess I can't delete like everything, select everything, or do we need another shortcut for that? I don't know. Oh my god, this, this is ridiculous. Um, okay, one sec. Also, can we somehow maybe reduce the size? No, we can't reduce the size of it, unfortunately. So let's delete that. No, wait, this is too much. Maybe I didn't delete this trash previously. But yeah, it's hard to select everything. <clears throat> this is annoying. And we have here a little bit of trash. Oh my god.
So maybe we can also chop off piece of this mountain. Yeah, we definitely can. my god please delete okay assume there there is some vertices that are not visible when i'm selecting but this is just annoying but okay mm. should be fine we can also delete all of that mm. Okay, that, that should be fine, I think. So now, now, if we... If we export this... Uh, no, not this one. Let's use this one. Okay, so we have that. 78 megabytes. Let's put it here. And close this. What? Uh, this one. So, can we make it build the nerve mesh? <clears throat> nope too many vertices so we probably need 65,000 to have 78,000 How can we make it work?
But yeah, this is fun and all, but the problem is I would need to basically manually create a mesh to generate the nav mesh, which is not great at all. Can try and get rid of all everything that we don't really need. But yeah, that's gonna be really annoying to work with. Oh my god. <sighs> so right now it was 78,000, right? So uh, I just got rid of a bunch of faces. Now if we export this and try to build it again. Will that make any difference in the amount of vertices for the nav mesh? Because if yes, then maybe we can actually make it work. But yeah, it's going to be very annoying to work with. We would basically have to get rid of everything. Everything that's not needed. <clears throat> so now it's seventy four and a half. Well. Yeah, looks like we can get rid of stuff that we don't need that, that would improve performance, but it's just ridiculous. So uh, to start with, maybe we can export just the terrain and see how we can affect that. So without any static meshes, stuff like that, we just try to fine tune the terrain and see if that, if that, is, if that is even possible. Because if not, then I, I don't know, I have no idea. So uh, this one. Because, <clears throat> yeah, we did decrease the amount of vertices by 1000 basically, even less than that. And that's really unfortunate. So we need terrain info too, I guess. Yeah. Actually, no. We need the terrain info zero.
So let's open another Blender instance. Import Tail Experimental point zero one point zero one. Crap. So yeah, I guess we do need to uh, to export the terrain too. Just it's weird that it was different in the terrain editor. But okay, maybe I just looked at the wrong thing. Okay, so I have the terrain. Now export. Oops. Wavefront maps. This one. And it crashed. Uh, wait, what? That outline. Oh my god. I don't know. Well, I guess maybe it doesn't like this thing. But what can I do? Mm. Okay. Uh, let's forget about all of this for now. So what we also need to do is we need to actually include this project uh as a source dependency so i need i need not sharp enough i need this one to be added as a sub module Second, cloning. Okay, we should be good. That recast. Sure. Now we go here. So we need a solution folder. 
that request. And then here we will just include that request core. Directly. No. Okay, Let, let's follow the same structure that we have here. So we just add this as a solution folder, right? Uh, can't do that. So let's add solution folder here. SRC. And then we add uh, existing project dot request core okay can we still build the solution nope we don't have that net eight Okay, can we do something about that? I'm pretty sure I do have the tool set. Hmm, maybe I don't. Let's go and download the, the, the new .NET. .NET 8 is the key. Sure. Let's close this. Yeah, hopefully that's enough to just build that project. I don't really need to migrate the whole server to the new .NET, but at least I, I want to just, um, just be able to build the project. And yeah, I have no idea how we can build the nav meshes. Can try to maybe fine tune uh, the tool that builds the nav meshes, but I highly doubt that they can do anything about it. We just need it a little bit bigger than it allows currently. It shouldn't be a big problem. Okay, we have the .NET. So now if we go to the tools, <clears throat> hmm. I don't have it. Let's see how I must build. Maybe we can What do I need to select? Them as build DLL. Sure. Okay. 
So let's see. Will that do anything for us? Okay, I think we can do it, just I need to fix this thing. And we should be good. Yeah, we're good. <clears throat> okay, so we have the core and we also need the detour. Okay. And um, maybe let's add the demo as well. What does demo use? Crap. To this request tool set. Okay. So we need request tool set and we need the demo. And I guess request because request tool set is most likely using the request. Oh my God, it uses everything. Well, okay, whatever. Let's just add everything. So, detour, detour, crawl, crowd. Dynamic. Oh, come on. Extras. Tile cache. Recast. Hmm. Actually, I don't think we we need the extras, but oh, no, we do need them. <sighs> okay, just let's add everything. Vector 3 is not up to date actually, but yeah, we do use the main branch for now. It's just I also wanted to try the Vector 3 version, but I guess we need to wait for, for, for the guy to, to fix that, to fully implement it. So we have recast, recast demo. Why is it so slow all of a sudden? OK. 
Okay, and we need existing project request tool set. That's the last one. Okay, so we have that, so let's try to build this. So what is it done? Finish building request demo. Yeah, I guess so. Okay, so request demo. Oh, here we go. Sure, whatever. Now I have a bunch of warnings in my solution. This is great. Whatever. So, can we do anything about this? Uh, guess we can actually try and use the actual client folder maps open oh now we can actually see something at least Oops, okay, so, so, uh, I'm scared to hit that build button. Can we optimize it somehow? Mean region size, merged region size. Maybe we can do that. Like, what are these regions? Maybe we can decrease region size. Maybe we can enable Thailand. Let's try that. I never tried that. Nope. Could not allocate a tile.
interest. Could not allocate a tile. Hmm. I am going to copy the object files. Tap that request. Okay. Um, Now, oh, I see. So those are the tiles. Next tiles, 64. Okay, let's try this. Mm. It's doing something. Here we go. Have tiles. It's so slow. But yeah, that's understandable. So, okay, we have tiles now, right? So probably that was the solution to our problem. Now, what if we save it? Eight megabytes. Let's see, can we include that? Uh, so, yeah, we need to add the nav mesh table. Yeah, does it work across tiles properly? Think so. Yeah, think so. So, uh, let's see. We need where is it? Nav meshes. So zone ID is two. Now offset, let's put this one. Can we load it? Wait. Crap, it builds with that net eight. One sec. Put 
builds with .NET 8, even though I have the global JSON set to .NET 6. Ah, uh, interesting. Really interesting. But okay, let's let's try. Oh, I think I forgot to export the data. Let's try again. Nav mesh this one. Yeah, it did a lot. Okay, so let's see now. Does it actually work? I can see some increase in CPU consumption. So that's maybe a good sign. Yeah, it looks like we do need to optimize it a little bit. But yeah, that's the most populated zone in the game and the monsters there are constantly moving. So that's that's interesting. That's the, like an actual test. Also, I believe this is the biggest zone. So uh, let me see. First of all, we can try and test if the pathfinding is still working. Yeah, it does. Even though it's it's lagging. But yeah, I'm gonna be dead in a second. Let's go to this map now. So, I think it works, but yeah, we, we still need to fine tune it. So, I need some kind of fence to test this properly. Let me kill this one. Let's go and find some kind of fence. This one maybe? Now let's test something. Hmm. I want to see maybe if we have something very interesting uh, on the harbor. Or maybe the bridge that we have here would be even a better test. Uh, Test solution. So, okay, if we go there, target is too far away. Oh, come on. Okay, let's spawn a monster here.
There we go. Hmm. I don't think it works. I want to, to screenshot this. Hopefully I'm online. But yeah, looks like I had a disconnect. And yeah, uh, it was basic, not, not a full minute, what do you mean? One second, how long that was? 28, 39, 29. Yeah, basically a full minute. That's that's bad. Hmm. So yeah, I do need to tweak my router a little bit. That's weird, but okay. This works. Get stuck a little bit, but yeah, looks like it does work. Yeah, goes around. Very nicely, actually. For some reason it went the long way around, but okay. But yeah, hopefully the the vote didn't cut. One second, let me actually double check that. Crap, it did cut. Mm. One sec. There was this Satan, oh, disconnect protection. So disconnect protection should work for 90 seconds. It was offline for one minute and it did cut. Interesting. And yeah, it counts as a new session. First three minutes. Wow. Wow. Crap. Never was that long before. Maybe I did uh, mess up my router settings. I did try to set up uh, failover. But maybe I shouldn't have touched that. Okay, uh, let me check this side. Hmm. It goes the long way around. This is weird. But yeah, at least it goes around. Hmm. So where is this? 
somewhere here. So if I place, I think the monster was here. Yeah, weird. Does build a long way around. Why? Interesting. So I should place the monster somewhere in the middle and stay next to the, the post. Okay, let's try. So if I put a monster somewhere here. Yeah, it does go around. I don't think there is any um, offset. So yeah, maybe we can actually use this tool and yeah, the only thing that we needed was the, the tiling. Which is fine. Which is fine. So here is one edge of the tiles. Okay, that's does look fine. I don't know. So we use the tile size four sixty four. Let me write that down. So uh Four So yeah, hopefully that's that's good enough. So now what I wanted to try. Um, now actually I do need that tool again. <clears throat> I need more nav meshes. So let's build nav meshes for everything that we have in the game right now. And we will see how that goes, how much more CPU usage we will have. Because right now I have, oh, actually dropped. Hmm. Well, it's a little bit weird. I, I think it's a little bit more than it was, but we'll see. I, I want to try and actually implement all the nav meshes for other maps. So this one. Oops. Export TL F00. Okay, we can actually cut a lot of this. 
but don't think we have to I think we can just do it as it is we don't have to really bother about the size of the map so uh, export oh wait 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 I need to mirror the map here we go now export uh, wave front uh, f zero zero can we exclude the materials is it the UV coordinates oh materials nice so hard f zero zero export also let's delete all the materials and all the old objects we don't need them anymore so we have that now load client press maps f0 0 okay so we enabled thailand 464 build Technically, we don't need all of that, but it's not a lot, actually. Those matches are pretty big, so it should be fine. So, uh, save. Now I need to pull it from here. No, not here. Touch request. Hot F00. And we need to add one. So this is a D3, I believe. Yeah, Leaf Island. This nav mesh. Okay. Now I close that. We delete this. Mm. We need another Unreal Editor. So, um, yeah, we have the caves, three levels, or at least one of the levels. But let's, let's first finish the Prontera. So we have, yeah, F02. Come on. Uh, we need to exclude the water. Oh, and also for the previous location, I forgot to remove the water. So that's, that's a problem. I uh, think what we can do, maybe, we open the groups and we exclude C. 
No, that's not very useful. Because we still have the waves, which are not in that group for some weird reason. So let's just manually unselect it. Hmm. And I think that won't let me double check. Yeah, we have something there. Okay. Hopefully that's it. So this is PRT underscore F zero two. Yeah, I think it did include the water. Yeah. That's unfortunate. So I have to redo this level, but okay, that's 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 fine. Um, so file import stale um, prtf02. We flip it. Yeah, looks good. Export this one. Hopefully this tool doesn't leak. So, uh, client press maps. Build. This one is actually bigger. It says it's going to build 14 by 14 tiles. But that's okay. Uh, save now, mesh. So this is six. Now uh, I need to close this. Oh, 
Wait. I don't think it looks good. It looks like I've missed another... Yeah. Somehow I missed another sheet of water. <sighs> and I already closed the editor. How is that possible? Oh yeah, there is another one. Okay. Um, yeah, I missed that. So let's unselect this one. Probably should zoom in a little bit come on wait don't think it unselected anything. Oh my god. Yeah, it selected only that sheet. Okay, hopefully now it's going to be fine. Still can see some weird flat sheet. What is that? Still a water mesh, but where is it? Oh, I see, I see. Come on. Oops. This stupid editor. I hate it. I just I just hate it. Now I have to reselect everything. Okay, now at least I, I know that there is more meshes that I need to take care of. Also, I need to delete that map file. Okay.
Okay, so here we have two meshes. I'm not sure how can I select. Oh, here we go. Here are both of them. Okay, now we need that one. We also need the waves. And also this one. Hopefully that's it. I'm not gonna close this editor. Let's just export. Uh, hello. Uh, my God. How do I pronounce your 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 name? SKN Zinya. Hi. Yeah, SKN. I keep forgetting how to how to pronounce your name. So we have that. So let's import it again. Okay, now I think we get. Yeah. Yeah. Now we can export this waveform. Wait, I need to mirror it. I forgot. Here we go. Now we export. I have a question. Is it possible to migrate the project to a more recent version of Unreal? Uh, theoretically, yes. Practically, not really. Because that's a huge amount of work. Um, basically, we would have to recreate the client from scratch. Uh, and yeah, that, that's just an enormous amount of work. I don't think it's going to be. Uh, it's gonna happen in the nearest, I don't know, five years at least. <laughs> but theoretically, maybe, maybe sometime in the distant future. And this thing is lagging now. Everything is lagging. But yeah, basically, it doesn't really matter if we pick Unreal on it or any other engine, because in any case, we would have to completely recreate everything. Uh, maybe, just maybe, it would be possible to migrate some of the logic, uh, like the, the, the UI logic, for example, from the old client to the new one if we pick Unreal. But I don't see the point. If we would do the complete like recreation, it would be better to just develop uh, a nice UI system instead of the crap that we have here. So yeah, probably never gonna happen, but we'll see. I'd really like to. Uh, but yeah, that's a huge amount of work. It's basically just creating the, the, the client from scratch. We would only have, um, we would only have the, the visual resources and that's it.
that's good because it would be better to remaster the game at least it will have more features um yes and no um basically the problem is um, like um, it's not gonna bring a lot of benefits from the new engine like it, it will speed up my work like my development it would be much easier to work with but um the problem is for for the players it wouldn't bring a lot of new stuff actually um and yeah i would i would have to spend a lot of time to make the game look like the, the original game so maybe we can bring in some i don't know lighting um dynamic lighting that would look better but it would look like a different game and to make it look and feel like this original game that that's gonna basically disable a lot of features of unreal 5 so i don't know that's that's a tough question um and yeah technically i just don't see any ben any real benefits um at the moment so I would still like to do that, but that's not going to happen soon. So also I need to recreate uh, the leaf island of mesh because I missed um, the water mesh. Oops, again, forgot about the water mesh. So where is it? Where is it? Is that the one? Let me see. I have a couple of them actually here. Oh my god. Yeah, that's definitely a water mesh. Ah. <sighs> so yeah, um, if we would migrate this to a newer version of Unreal or any other modern engine, uh, that would mean that I would be able to work faster on the game because this Unreal Editor slows me down significantly. A lot of stuff um, that I need to do basically lead to crashes or something like that. So yeah, that's not fun. But on the other hand, Uh, for you guys, it would not um, have a lot of new features. It would be much more stable though. So that's one huge benefit actually. Because making this game not crash is challenging. At least in the current state of the, of the game.
But yeah, actually some people did try to port this game to other engines. Like uh, the Divine Arrow project did try to port it to WebGL. Uh, I think some, I think Lucky Arrow 2 uh, did try to port it to Unreal Engine 4, but again, that's basically recreating uh, the locations. But yeah. I don't think anyone had like real um real results. Lack of support with this engine is also an obstacle. So you need new resources, you would need to create them from scratch. Well, not really. If I would introduce like new models like 3d models new textures it's not really a problem i can do that i can develop new maps here technically um it's just yeah it, it's it's gonna be a very very slow progress process uh compared to what it would look like in modern level editor it's just the way unreal editor was back in the day Yeah, technically, I don't know, I can, for example, purchase some assets on uh, asset stores that don't restrict asset usage to one specific engine. Uh, there, for example, sometimes you, 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 can, um, you can stumble upon some assets in Humble Bundle. Uh, and yeah, I do have some bundles from there. Um, and... I can technically use models from, from those bundles. It would be better if I would have, for example, Unreal Engine and I could use the assets designed for Unreal Engine directly. Like I, I, I am speaking about the modern Unreal Engine. Um, but yeah, still, it, it is possible. It's just a lot harder. Okay, do we have all the water stripped? Yes, I think so. Yeah. Now we export by front. I do need a, uh, to restart this tool every time. It's not perfect. Also, maybe I can save the object files directly into the tools folder. That would be faster. Okay, Thailand. <clears throat> but yeah, technically I have full control over the client. I can do whatever I want with it. Like I can build basically very complex new levels and uh, build it into the game. Uh, theoretically, I can fix all the crashes that we have and like introduce a lot of new features. It's just it it's all challenging, very challenging, and it ta and takes a lot of time. Okay, uh, so we have this. We have the outside of Hadmemis. We have 
Now we need the head mimics itself. And this one. Okay, so I guess we'll grab from here up to actually can't see thing to there. Oh, I see to here. Now we need to exclude the water. I think we're good. Now we just export all of this. Again, I need to first import that in um, Blender and see and see if we have everything exported properly before closing the editor. Okay, yeah, I think we're good. No water. Yeah, that looks fine. Um, we can, although, get rid of this portion of the map. It's okay. I, I don't want to do that right now. Let's let's try to test the full map and see how that behaves, and then we'll try to optimize. Okay, we're close on this. Restart. Forget to move that to a separate folder, but whatever. Thailand. And yeah, we still would have to fine tune these nav meshes. But for now, I just want to build the nav meshes for all the locations that we have and basically just see um, how the server behaves performance wise. <clears throat> I understand a little English, still learning. I just can correct some things in the translator and then I hear the answer and try to understand. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you can also turn on the the, the closed captions uh, at the bottom of the player. You have like a CC button near the settings. So you will be able to basically see the, the subtitles for what I'm saying. It's not very accurate because it's AI generated automatically, um, but still it's, it's something at least. I think I need to increase the uh, allowed angle.
but actually it's pretty close to what characters can can climb because yeah here it's it's very hard to climb up so maybe it's good maybe it's okay Also, I need to adjust the extractor so it only includes the, um, the collisions, not the full models. Because sometimes models can have no collisions, sometimes they have simplified collisions. <clears throat> Go up there all the time. Yeah, if you're speaking about this one. Uh, I actually wanted to place some stairs here, like a, a wooden staircase, or maybe maybe here. Uh, but yeah, first I would need to create that. Uh, but yeah, here you can see, for example, the leaves on the tree, according to this tool, are climbable. Well, not climbable, but you can walk up there if you can get up there. Um, but technically all those leaves don't have any collisions, I believe. So yeah, we still need to fine tune this stuff, but it, it will do for now. It will do for testing, so save nav mesh. Now we move it to the server folder. Like that. Okay, so now we have this. Pretty sure we can close the editor now. This one, I think, is fine as well. So, what do we have? have had we have we're missing two uh printer fields so let's do that they have a lot of monsters actually right now the server consumes 3.4 percent cpu and i believe that that was uh, exactly the same amount before. Uh, actually, while we're doing all of that, let me restart the server because now we have a bunch of new nav meshes. It's still not everything, but maybe we will see some increase in the CPU usage. So we have all the outside had memes, we don't have the caves yet. Let's do the rest. Two maps of the printer. Now, do we need to unselect the water somewhere? Think. This is a water mesh. Okay. Well, we have this stuff. That's actually bad because all of that stuff that's uh, here in the water, those are static meshes that will be on the level, so... But I don't think it can solve this um, before uh, changing the Unreal Editor, so it doesn't export the objects that don't have any collisions. So I guess that'll do for now. We just export everything. So this is PRT. PR 
F03, STL. We delete this. Yeah, in the meantime, the server CPU consumption is basically the same. That's promising. So import uh, STL F03. Actually, I don't see. Oh, here they are. You can see those small uh, tiles. Crap. Yeah, you definitely can see them, but it should be okay. Export. Uh, here F zero three. Okay, so we need to enable Thailand build. Still, I think the best approach would be to integrate the NavMesh build into into Unreal Editor and make it in a way that we place some colliders, um, that not colliders, but actors, and only where the actors can go, only those NavMeshes we will export. So this will basically cut out everything that's not accessible from within the map. To all these mountains, we don't need that technically, but whatever, we have it. I don't think it will affect the performance a lot. So here we have PRT F03. Seven. Okay. Close this, close that. Learn C++ in college. Took a C-sharp course, but I work in a com company in Brazil on ERP system. Programmed in Delphi, oh God, <laughs> I feel ya. <laughs> it's hard to program in Delphi. Well, yeah, I don't really like Delphi, but yeah, there are still some programs that are still being used, written in Delphi, and yeah, so someone have to uh, support them. Actually, yeah, one of the tools that they used even recently, uh, actually don't have it installed anymore. Uh, but yeah, I used HadeSQL, which is a MySQL um, database management tool that allows you to edit the database. And it also written, it's also written in Delphi. And the, it, that one is actually good. So yeah, there are still some uh, some people that still like to use Delphi. 
But yeah, that's a very old language. Don't see it often anymore. Okay, let's see. Oh my god. I selected everything. How? This RP is told to migrate to another language. Yeah, yeah, I understand. Company was born in 1999. Also programming PLSQL. Did the most program execution being done in the database and procedures? Yeah. Um, that's actually Nice, that's an interesting approach, but yeah, not a lot of companies, not a lot of projects follow this approach anymore, because it's just easier to to develop uh, in one single programming language and just build some kind of ORM, or how do you say it in English, ORM, uh, that will just map your data to the database and you're not thinking about the database anymore. Okay, let's export this. I think we have everything. So this is PRT F04. Yeah, F04. STL. Range of ready-made components, yeah, that's also a thing. If you have some nice tool that's already like ready to use and easy to use, but it's just written in another language, you just use that language. That's also very common. Did they flip the previous map? I did not. Oh no. Okay, let's flip it. Yeah, looks good. Now we export it. Uh, this one. I need to remember to flip the map as soon as I import it. Guess I just forget. Otherwise, now I need to rebuild the, the nav mesh. <clears throat> Alpha is old, but has a lot of performance to be used by companies. Yeah, yeah, basically it's like C++, but with weird syntax. <laughs> but yeah, it is pretty fast if you know how to use it. But 
So I want to migrate to C sharp and change chips. Database and governance and IT management. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, I personally uh, work, like professionally, uh, I work with PHP and I also don't like that. And that one is also very ancient. Um, but yeah, you do what you gotta do. Um, and yeah, that one is also built because it's still being used because there's just a lot of systems ready for it developed and it's pretty easy to use. So yeah, I totally understand you. I have absolutely the same thing. And yeah, I also would like to find a job um, where I would actually work with C Sharp professionally. Well, technically I do use some C Sharp on my current work, but it's, it's mostly PHP. Um, yeah. I would like to migrate completely to P to C sharp and ideally to the most recent versions of C sharp, like .NET eight. What 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 do they do? Oh my god! Okay. Looks good, I think. Actually, I think we are missing one wall. Why are we missing a wall? Why don't I see the wall here? Weird. But I think now we're good. They didn't notice that they didn't select the wall. Um, export this one. <clears throat> PHP is still widely used here in Brazil. Wasn't ground to JavaScript. Uh, well, yeah, yeah, a lot of people migrate to um, Node.js to Next.js on the server side or just to full single page applications completely in JavaScript without any backend. That's also a thing. Did I export it? Uh, import STL. Yeah. But yeah, PHP actually is being developed um, pretty actively still. And it receives a bunch of nice features, but it's still, it still has a lot of legacy and especially a lot of legacy developers. That's the main problem. Most of the developers still think about, still, still think of PHP as a script language and they do develop scripts, not programs. They don't use uh, object oriented programming. They use scripts with classes. Like that's, that's the main problem with PHP, uh, at least to me. And yeah, a lot of, um, a lot of legacy, uh, code there. To, that you still have to support. Like take a look at WordPress, for example, it's still being used and it's written on functions and in clouds, uh, includes. So yeah, the, that's... Well, that's something that we still have to work with. I don't mind, I enjoy working most of the time. Uh, but yeah, I would really 
prefer to work on uh, like more modern uh, C sharp .NET based ASP for, um, MVC framework um, and like nice technologies on the front end as well. Three eighty seven years ago, I was called to work at the company to program in PHP. Zen framework, yeah. And PHP and Laravel framework, and up coming to Delphi. <coughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I mostly work right now with uh, Yi framework. That one is pretty old school. It's pretty old. But yeah, uh, there are some nice stuff like Symphony framework, for example, H hugely inspired by Java. Um, and yeah, it's nice, but still it's far, um, far away from what we have in ASP.NET Core, for example. Okay, save. Okay, so we have all the admins outside locations, fields. We have all the printer, we have printer a dungeon. Still need the mirror cave. So let's do that, at least the first level. We can skip the other levels for now, but we do need the first level. Um, so let's close this. Let's switch to another language, however the situation in country is complicated. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, it's actually very common that uh, some companies um, hire people that don't really know the language and they teach them uh, how to basically develop in that language. <clears throat> oh, I wanted to test one thing. Here we have a bridge basically. Yeah, we do have a bridge. So, for example, if we start here and then here, yeah, it goes under the bridge. But if we try to go up this bridge, then we basically stop right there. Yeah. Yeah, this is the final part, okay. <clears throat> But yeah, you, you can even still uh, see some uh, offers, job offers that 
um, advertise something like cowboy and stuff like that. And yeah, people do hire even if you don't know that language, but you're willing to learn it because there are still some uh, some applications that need maintenance and they are written in that language. We still have mainframes, guys. We still have mainframes. That's, that's ridiculous, but it's still a thing. Uh, and yeah, someone has to support them. Someone has to develop um the code for for them but yeah slowly that thing goes away but still you you, you can sometimes see the job offers um about the cobble and other ancient languages Brazil, there is a, no culture in companies to support those who are starting out. Let's give opportunities to those who are willing to learn. Mm, that's weird. They want the person. Well, technically, yeah, most of the companies do want the person who already know, knows everything. Uh, they want a young person who just finished uh, college that has like 10 years of experience already and knows everything that they already use, but that's, that's not realistic. And the companies like that, even if they advertise, um, like positions like that, uh, at the end of the day, they're still hiring someone who, who they will teach. Okay, so this one, this one's gonna be a little developers, bit more complex. Developers, 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 yes, yes, <laughs> yeah, basically. Oh, I, th I think I can exclude water here pretty easily. Let's see, but I would have to double check every room basically. Uh, so I can see this plane. Um, did the alert go through because I didn't hear it? Thank you for them from from the heart of my bottom. Did you guys see it? Hear it? Because probably it's broken. I don't know. I don't see it in the redemptions. Oh, oh, I see, I see. Uh, you don't have enough Xenia for it. So it didn't go through. Oh, I see. I, I just read the chat quickly. I thought it, it's a redemption. Okay. Uh, is that another? Th Another water plane. Crap. I don't know. I need to. And I don't really see here if the water is included or not. Crap. Hmm. Okay, let's unselect everything. So, what we can try. Maybe we can use groups on this location. My God. Come on. Groups. 
water mesh. <sighs> this editor is so slow. Which framework you work with? I work with Yi. It's this one. Well, technically, I'm working with Yi too. So this this framework. Mm -hmm. I think my editor is is done. <laughs> let's let's restart. Oh, huh? oh, here we go. <laughs> it decided that it doesn't want to to be closed. Okay, so we we did this, uh, disable water mesh, water hidden. Oh, okay, water volume. So we removed, we disabled all the water groups. So let's go and check out if all the water is gone. Um, so where do we start? Let, let's start here with this portal. You know the origin of this. Here they use Laravel a lot. And the government uses, uses Zend a lot. Well, Yi is is very is a very old framework. It's pretty old school. It uses a lot of single tones, which is yeah, not not really good, but it is what it is. Uh wait, where am I? Okay, so let's start right here. Let's enable back the fog because it's really hard to see without the fog. Uh, so we have this waterfall. Guess we need to get rid of that. Well, actually, no. It's fine. It's fine. Um, we just need to make sure that we have all the water removed that the 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 bottom under the water is available yeah so far so good here as well Still have the waterfall, but that's fine. <clears throat> Your logo looks like the MSN logo. Uh, I actually don't know what's the logo. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can see the, the resemblance. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> but yeah, basically it's very old. It uses, it doesn't have or or ORM, but it uses, um, active record stuff like that it's it's old really old but it's still being supported and there are some nice um software developed uh, on this framework so yeah i'm working with that
Oh, that's all this Pascal. Yeah, yeah, true. But still, sometimes it does feel like that. <laughs> okay, I think we're good. Now we can export everything. Uh, like that. Export. So this is hot. D zero one. Okay. Now we import it here. Wait, where is it? Oh, that was a wrong format. Mm. Here we go. We also need to flip it. Did they flip the previous? What was the previous map? This one. Did they flip it? I'm not sure. Let's restart the the tool. And let's see. Is it flipped? Yes, it is. Okay, we're good. Okay, so load. Where, oh, I didn't export the file. Uh, my brain is not working anymore. So export, so I did flip it. Now export my front od t01. Here we go. Uh, hey, hi, I am Slavpas. How are you doing? Hi. So, uh, is it correct? Yes, it does look good. Now, do we need tiles here? Well, let's just use tile in. Let's see. It's on some lines before getting back to turn some tech animations. Nice, nice. How's my project going? Uh, trying to make it work but yeah it's a little bit challenging trying to finish this um, a star pathfinding but yeah i think i figured it out it's just a little bit not what i expected <clears throat> How's your project going? Are you streaming your your like development process? Are you a streamer as well? Because I don't think I've I've seen you before. Three three four hours a day during weekends. Nice. Let's see if this command still works. Let me shout you out. Real Engine 5 souls like PvP game sounds interesting.
Does it work? Doesn't work. Weird. My my clip command doesn't work for some reason. I have like <laughs> With a fucking teleport, dude. Come on. My game is tripping balls right now. What the fuck? Oh my god, the teleport, dude. He, I you can't catch him. Uh, my game's bugged out. What game is that? I, I don't oh. think I've seen it before. Oh, cool. And I can't pick anything up. Awesome. Weird. Yeah, I don't think I've seen that game before. So let's see, do we have a straight path from here down to the end of the cave down here? We don't. Hmm. Hmm. So where do we uh, interrupt? What? Hmm, this is weird. It should go down there. Oh, I see. I see. Technically it's fine, because, yeah, there is a pretty steep hill, but it's uh, it's under the water, so it's gonna be fine. So if we place a start here, now we have the, the continuous path. Uh, cool battle royale, battle royale game, spell break, no, I haven't heard about that. Yeah, now we have the continuous path. Okay, looks good, I think. Let's save this nav mesh. So this is AD4. Okay, now I think we should be good. So uh, we have all the maps that we have right now properly populated, right? We have all the Printera and the Culvert. We have Admimis and the Cave. Yeah, let's try to restart the server. So right now we have, mm, it's actually 4% CPU usage just slightly higher. Oh, now it's 3.7. Okay, I think I still think it's slightly higher than it was before the nav meshes, but we haven't uh, optimized anything yet. So that's understandable. So let's go take a look uh, if the monsters follow these nav meshes. So, so far again, 3.9. Well, right now I'm loading, so. So let's go to the caves directly. I'm very curious uh, how the, the monsters are traveling there. Is 
especially frogs, for example. So, uh, oh, actually, actually, uh, let's go check out the end of the cave. I'm very curious how the the bridges work there. Well, at least one bridge. At least it looks like they are walking, not falling through. That's already good. And this one is glitching. Technically, I think I can hit him from down here, maybe. No, I don't have the line of sight. So, okay, let's go further into the cave. Maybe I can go up that balcony. Oops. And see if I can snipe some kind of monster from up there. Yeah. Can I hit you? No. Too far away. Okay. So the server is basically at 4% right now. I'm using uh, backend container orchestration. Uh, right now, the test server that we have, um, we, we, we have like a closed, be closed beta running, and the server um, is running in multiple, uh, on multiple VMs in uh, Docker containers. Uh, but yeah, technically it can theoretically run in Kubernetes and I'm gonna make it work in Kubernetes, it's just it's not ready yet. Um, there are still some problems that I have to solve. But the main problem was like I, I started working on the Kubernetes implementation I don't know, three, four years ago? Um, and I had to stop because, no, I think it was even more. I think it was like five years ago. Um, but I had to stop because um, I couldn't afford uh, a like good good performing Kubernetes cloud, uh, and I couldn't like deploy a Kubernetes cl cluster on the server that I have without a huge performance hit. Um, so yeah, I just gave up. But yeah, now we have a lot of options like K3S uh, and stuff like that, uh, which I'm very um, curious to try. So how can we test the pathfinding? I was a web dev before switching to game dev. Uh, well, I, I am a web dev professional, like this is my day day job, is web development. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> same thing. But yeah, right now it doesn't really like automatically scale but can be manually scaled when needed, the server that I have. Um, but yeah, I would really like to have a proper Kubernetes setup, the proper scaling. So, can you guy... Oh my god, it's not working. Or maybe it's just lost the aggro. No, it's just not working. Huh. Hmm. 
Oops. Oops. How do I get that? Crap, I need to go all the way down there. But yeah, I don't think the pathfinding is working here. Did I restart the server? Yes, I did. Hmm. Why? Okay, where else can I test this? Without getting closer to the boss, because it's too loud. Hmm. That one's stuck as well. So yeah, I don't think nav meshes are working on this map for some weird reason. I need a tool to test the nav meshes. I already have the like a command. I already have the, the command to test the, the physics volumes, but I need something for, for the nav meshes. So where can I test this? Here maybe. No. Need some kind of a fence or a balcony. I don't know. Or just a wall, but the problem is this this map is like very I don't know smooth in terms of pathfinding here. No sharp edges really. Hmm. And all the walls are uh, mm, round. Hmm. Can't find any place where I can actually test the pathfinding. It's gonna be obvious if there there is a problem. Well, we def we definitely have a problem up on that bridge. That's for sure. But I want to know if that's just that bridge or do we have a bigger problem? Maybe here. No, it's not working at all. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. So map four, right? No, uh, status. Yeah, map four. Hmm. Okay, where else can we test? Actually, maybe it's just an offset again. Or maybe I forgot to flip the map? No, I did not. Um, hmm. Okay. Where can we do some testing? So where am I right now? Let's go to the teleporter. And uh, maybe we will pick this, this rock or this one. Right next to the teleporter. Um, teleporter. Wait. Wait, where is it? Should be there, I think. Yeah. Here we go. So this thing, uh, can we place a dot here? Yeah, we can. 
Uh, so now we need to find it there. Crap, that's far away actually. Um, okay, whatever, let's go. Here we go. So I need to reset the selection because I don't see anything. Come on. So basically this position should match to the position in the editor if it wakes up <clears throat> here we go so this rock can't see it really so should be theoretically Somewhere there. Actually, let me see. What's the pivot point? Uh -huh. It's slightly to the side, but still close enough. So, 1097, 1098. Oh, 1097.9, 1098.1. <clears throat> we have a small discrepancy. Okay, uh, so I think that's that's close enough. Uh, Z is six seventy four. Uh, Z is six seventy Nine point four. Ah, wait. That may be. That may be fine because we we put a point up there, but the this rock. Yeah, this rock has the pivot point on the bottom, so it's fine. Nine point five. So. Okay. Yeah. That should be fine. Uh, now y minus 122.96. It looks fine. It looks fine. Let's pick another object somewhere. Where is the end of the location? Mm, here maybe. So, um... Should be somewhere here. Crap, I selected the light. So, uh, five oh three point fourteen. Five oh three. Okay, close enough. Uh, 85.46, 85.8, still close enough. I don't think, don't think there's problem with the offset, but for some reason it just doesn't work. It should be working. 
Ja, da sind. I think I would have to isolate that monster and just debug or just remove every monster. That would be easier. So let's exit. Wait, no. Let's go back to that balcony. Okay, let's save here, and uh, yeah, let's exit, restart the server, but we need to change the settings a little bit. Mm. Now we start the server. So let me see, uh, where are the Nagmesh loads? Ah, I know why, <laughs> I know why. Uh, everything should be fine, let's revert this. I forgot to export the data from the database to the CSV files. I definitely didn't do that. Okay, and let's double check that all the nav meshes are loaded. Yeah, there is a lot. So, where is the dungeon? Here we go. Yeah, the nav mesh is loaded now. <clears throat> so, yeah, let's try now again. It should be working. So, uh, no, this one's too far away. Let's just spawn a Pukui here. Ah. Uh. Let's spawn another one a little bit further away so I can actually attack it. Okay, never mind. We're just gonna cut it. I can hear it, but I can't see it. Oh, here we go. Yeah. I think it goes up up the the stairs. But I will probably lose the aggro. Pff, 
before it reaches the balcony, yeah. Can I hit it? Yeah, it's definitely working. <laughs> nice. So what's the CPU consumption? 4.4, 4.1. Yeah, we do uh, have some performance degradation, but it's totally fine. Now it's stuck on the client side. That's okay. Yeah, the problem is on the client side, it didn't reach the corner before it started to turn. Hmm. So maybe we do have some small offset. Oops. Hmm, yeah. So yeah, let's double check the offset again, because I was looking at some huge discrepancy. But looks like if we have something, then it's pretty slow, pretty small. So it should be something like that. So 503. 5 of 3.1, this is not big enough, uh, minus 23.3, ah, that's, that's the excess, that's fine, um, 85.7, 85.4, .4. Hmm. I don't know, if we do have some discrepancy, I don't think it's big enough to cause this, um, the monster getting stuck. Uh, let's check who do we have with small radius that we've set previously. I think we had a rat. Let's find a rat. Uh, this one. So let's put it maybe here. Yeah, this one's fine. So yeah, I think if we fix the collisions, it's gonna be fine. Okay, come here, right? What if I go down there? Should be going down the stairs. Yeah, nice. Here we go. Good red. Okay, what if we find the hardest rock? Okay, this is low. Okay, I think it can climb this rock, but not on the client side. That's bad. Also, I'm gonna die, but it's okay. Let's see. Um, mm, this rock is climbable, but 
from only a few places. Hmm. Yeah, looks like it got stuck on the client side. Hmm. Yeah, like you can climb here. Actually, actually no. Hmm. So yeah, that's a problem, but I'm not sure how we can solve this. So according to the according to request, we can climb this rock in a few places. But we can't really do that on the client side. Uh, okay, can we configure that? Max climb, max slope, max acceleration, max speed. Hmm. Also, now that we have Thailand, maybe we can um, increase the resolution a little bit. that make any difference? Can still climb. Hmm. Okay, if we... Max slope 45. I think I need to reduce this and increase slope to match what the client has. So, um, what level can I can I test this on? Uh, let's let's open another instance. No, let's close this one. And let's open. The minutes. So here it should be relatively easy to to compare to the actual possibilities of the client to climb. So if we do just normal settings with Thailand. Oh, you can actually see, I think, the slopes that are climbable. But yeah, this, this looks fine, although these are not connected. Hmm. Yeah. Okay, so if we... Decrease this to point one like we tested previously. This point one. No, let's do point two. Because it's gonna take a lot of time. We increase the radius a little bit.
Yeah, it's gonna take some time. And yeah, we definitely have some increase on the CPU usage on the server side. Back to animate and yeah, yeah, th thanks for stopping by and good luck. So when we increased the resolution, now it's not connected at all. Hmm. Do we still have the doors working correctly? Yeah, kinda. Okay, let's try point one. Mm. Another thing that I wanted to, to test, well, actually now that we have this project loaded into the server solution, we now need to replace the package. Oh, where is it? Oh, that's the game project. Yeah, now instead of this, we need to add dependencies to other projects. Where was that? Properties? I don't remember. There we go, build dependencies. So we need to add that recast core and titter. And remove this. Wait, I don't think that worked. Yeah, it didn't work. Okay, let's do that manually, whatever. Why don't I have here we go. No suggestions. <sighs> that recast this RC that recast core. And that recast detour. Okay, should be good. Okay, this thing is done. Looks a little bit better. Although it's lagging now a lot. Not sure why. Maybe because I've built a bunch of nav meshes that are now sitting there in the memory. Oh my god, probably. I'm almost out of memory. Well. So, uh, we now have these projects. So now this thing should, yeah, I'll leave here. Nice. So now we have proper debug traces. That's good. So, uh, oh my So what did I want to test? Oh, I wanted to see if I can adjust 
the navmesh. So it behaves somewhat similar to the client. The problem is I don't know the like the actual climb degrees and stuff like that. So let's see if I load um, this one. So let's try doing like that. Yeah, here you can see this, this is unclimbable, but I guess it's, ah, mm, where is that max climb? Max slope. I guess we cannot climb in our client at all. So the masters cannot jump. They can only go up some slopes. So if we decrease that, what would happen? <clears throat> oh, wow. Mm, I guess I didn't understand this correctly. So max climb, what is max climb then? Uh, one sec. Maybe I can open the, the original one. We cast the demo. This. No, I don't have any documentation on that. So what is max climb and what is max slope? So what if I set it to 75? Now I, I've noticed that these edges are now painted uh, gray. So I guess we should see mm, these now meshes uh, touch now together. Mm, well, almost kinda. Hmm. So what's the difference then between max climb and max slope? Hmm. 
Now what I probably should open the docs for the original because navigation No, let's recast. Uh, I guess I need to find Maxwell. Hmm. This is weird. I have no idea what's the difference between these two. So, um, climb. Mm. Where do I configure this? walkable slope angle, the maximum slope that is considered walkable. Okay. Walkable climb, maximum ledge height. This is still considered to be traversable. Uh, I have no idea. Uh, angle. The maximum slope is considered walkable from a zero to ninety. is to filter out areas of the world where the ground slope would be too steep for an agent to traverse. Mm -hmm. So this is basically how we define walls, right? So this is exactly what I was thinking about. Practical upper limit is around 85 degrees. Okay. Now walkable climb, maximum ledge height that is considered to still be traversable. So, uh, given the designer design, the max climb distance world units, the value of walkable climb should be max climb divided by what? Cell size. Huh. So if we want, ah, I see, I see, I see. So this max climb is dependent on this one. So max climb divided by, let's say, point 0.1. I don't know. Let's try this. 
Slope 45. Allows the mesh to flow over low lane obstructions. Yeah, but it's weird that it didn't connect. But yeah, probably. Here we go. Yeah, probably that was because of the resolution. It was not allowing the max climb that I have set to point 0.1. So yeah, that, that, that looks good. Uh, let's create another instance. Let's open Printera. And let's see. So uh, if I put point two point one, point two point one, and max climb to point two. Radius point seven. Let's see, and yeah, enable tiles four sixty four. Yeah, here we go. But yeah, I am afraid that now it's gonna make a lot of surfaces unclimbable. I don't know. Yeah, like this is definitely something that um, a monster can go over. I'm pretty, pretty sure. Let's try. Yeah, this is not a problem. Um, I don't know. So probably we need to increase the max climb by three. Okay, so now this is fine, right? Uh, if we go back to this one, set it to 0.3. Also, I wanted to check the doors. Oh my God, where am I? I wanted to check the doors. Yeah, these doors are now, are now broken. Okay, let's do 0.6. Uh, 
Actually, this is probably because of the the climb, not because of the the radius. Yeah. Oops. So I still need to increase that. Um, actually, let me see if I let a monster go through that. So I'm still using right now an old mesh, old nav mesh. So let's try to make this monster go through the door. It should be fine. Unless the monster gets stuck here. No, it's not. Okay, so I guess I can judge uh, by, by the ability of the monster to easily go up this, these stairs. So let's try point four. Okay, now I have this. The stairs now are unclimbable. But this, this may be fine because we do have a special thing there on these stairs. Actually, maybe not. Maybe I removed that. Hmm. Okay, so I guess we need to re increase that even more. Let's climb point five. It's just, it's, it's weird. Uh, I guess it's going to be hard to find the parameters that match what the, the client um, uses. Okay, now we get here, get there. So let's try this set. So this is max climb point five. Also cell size point two, cell height. Point one. Let's try this set. So point two point one max climb point five. Right? And four to five degree slope. Radius point six. Okay, let's build. And we still have this thing. So the problem is you can climb up the stairs, but for some reason you can't climb up that rock. Let me turn off the sound because there is a really loud bus right there. So where is this? Yeah, it looks like the client tries to make it go, go up the slope, but it can't. Can jump though, and the slope is fine. So just this ledge, for some reason, is not walkable. Hmm. Weird. Okay, what if I open another editor?
And let's see uh, print error. Because if I remember correctly, there is uh, some special kind of object on the stairs. It lets you skip them. Hmm. No? Guess we removed that. Hmm. Here, there, there is. This is the one. Oops, how do I select it? Block and volume. So this is how it's usually done in, in real, so you don't get cut on the stairs. Um, yeah, here, for example, we don't have it. Let's check this one. Th these stairs are pretty steep. You can close this one, I believe. So, um, those stairs. Yeah, these ones are not traversable, so we need to fix that definitely. So the, the max climbs should be more than that. Because this is incorrect. And in the meantime, let's go and check these stairs against the, the actual monsters. So can you go up the stairs? You can. So this is fine. Okay, mm, so what do we do? <sighs> this is not enough. What are the default settings? I already forgot. Default is point 0.9, okay. So we still have some room. Well, not, not a lot of room. But yeah, this is definitely weird. That ledge on the rock is definitely lower than point 0.5. It's lower than the stairs, but still you get cut on that, uh, on that ledge and you can't climb. Crap. Don't think we can, we should actually mess with this thing. Uh, probably there will be a lot of stuff like that in the game where you just get stuck. Um, oh, you know what? Maybe, well, I'm gonna test that in a moment. First, uh, let's see how far we need to go to make these stairs traversable. In the meantime, we can go back to the same place. 
Because I think that rock has different collision model than the actual model. And we export the actual model, not the collision model. So, uh, one sec. Uh, here. Now we see all the custom collisions. Now it should be the same. Doesn't have any custom collisions. Hmm. Really? But yeah, I still need to improve the exporter because right now I export uh, all the terrain and static meshes as they are. Uh, but instead I should export like when you have a custom collision model assigned to the static mesh we should export that collision model and if the model doesn't have any um, any collisions enabled we should skip it completely so um, okay so this slope is now fine so I guess 0.7 is as low as we can go max climb should be 0 0.7 maybe even higher not sure oh i don't think oh no it's fine it's fine these stairs are fine so let's actually test this from here to there Oops. Yeah. It's fine. This is climbable. Hmm. Also, let's go check the um, the castle. So all of these stairs should also be fine. Yeah, looks like we get here. We are good here. Oh, these stairs are also problematical, but here we have actually the collision model. So this is actually very close to the actual slope that you can uh, go up uh, in the game. Well, not the slope, but the climb. So yeah, this, this looks good. This looks good. We need to use these settings, uh, but also, also, uh, I need to fix the stairs, probably. So I wanted to make the radius slightly higher, so like 0.9. Can we do that with these settings? Even though we would have to... No, we can't. Okay, so do we have to increase the resolution then to make that work? Because it should be possible to go through this door barely, but we need to add a little bit more radius around the corners. So yeah, this is, this is fine. Okay, okay, we have path here, path there. So maybe this is better. So let me save these settings. 
cell size 0.15, cell height 0.1. Um, radius 0.9, max climb 0.7. With tiles. Okay. Well, it's almost, almost fine, almost good. And yeah, um, performance wise, it's also okay. We do have a slight uh, increase in CPU usage, but generally it's okay. Probably I can optimize that a little bit. Um, but okay, uh, let's close all of that. Oh, and it's already 11 p.m. for me. So yeah, let's call it a day. Uh, we're gonna continue with the nav meshes. We still need to fine tune them. Um, so yeah, let's let's see. Do we have someone to raid? Wait, I think we do. Um, come on, load. some reason Twitch is not working for me. No, oh, here we go. So yeah, um, we did some good progress. We actually managed to build the nav meshes for all the populated maps that we have in the game right now. And that's great. We still need to fine tune them. We need to fine tune uh, the export uh, of the geometry. Uh, but yeah, it's already looking good. Um, can already use uh, use these nav meshes, and I think they will improve. Um, um, the feel of the game a lot. So um, yeah, let's let's continue with that next time. Not tomorrow though. Tomorrow we will have another gaming stream because it's Friday, right? Yeah, tomorrow is gonna be Friday. So we will have another gaming stream, uh, and probably on the weekend we will continue with enough meshes. Maybe we will have some real results that we can actually deploy. I don't know, we will see. Uh, but yeah, thank you everyone for watching and I hope to see you next time. Bye-bye. Uh,